advertisements we get. Good morning. Ugh. We get to talking here a little bit too much as we're getting ready. So, but thank you for joining us today. Um, we are preparing for the Sunday in Advent, which is different this year because it's also Christmas Eve. So it makes for an exciting time. In the morning, we will be um, preaching and on the uh, for Sunday in Advent text, with the, which is the um, Annunciation, the calling of Mary to be the mother of Jesus. And then in Sunday evening, we will be preaching the birth of Jesus. I don't know, how does that work? Nine hour pregnancy. But... <laughs> Uh, she isn't born on Christmas. He isn't born on Christmas Eve. We're just bringing celebrating that. it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, well, let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come with your abundant grace and might. Free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel is from the gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter, verses 26 through 38. In this annunciation, Luke makes clear that God comes with good news for ordinary people from little known places. This king will not be born to royalty in a palace, but to common folk in a stall. Here, Luke highlights the role of excuse me, the spirit with a special emphasis in this gospel. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man who is, whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by these words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month of, for her who is said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of our Lord. Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday is Every other time an angel appears, everybody's afraid. Mary, on the other hand, is just perplexed. You know, I got the feeling that, that at her age, too, she's quite young. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. We're talking about that, too, is the role of, kids and women 2,000 years ago is very different than today. Mm -hmm. You don't, usually don't expect 12 to 14 year olds to start getting married and thinking about kids. They, that's kind of almost all they did though. Yes. Well, that was Be a the, housekeeper and yeah. mother. Mother, yeah. That was the role they had in society. Okay. Well, the story of Jesus' birth begins to be told this fourth Sunday in Advent. It is a story of extraordinary visitation of an angel who tells of a miraculous conception. Yet it's rooted in an ordinary town of Nazareth and in a common young girl in Mary, whose simple faith and trust stand throughout the ages as a model of faithful discipleship. The timing of the angel Gabriel's visit to Mary, known in the church calendar as the Annunciation, is identified within the context of the story of the announcement of the birth of John the Baptist. And the sixth month refers to the sixth month of Elizabeth, Mary's cousin's pregnancies. pregnancy. It might be helpful to read Luke's account of the announcement of John's birth in Luke 1 through 5 and look at the similarities between the two accounts and what differences. So 
So this is found in Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 25. So in the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once, when he was serving as a priest before God, his section was on duty. He was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. You must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit, of power, spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until this day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah, wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remaining unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, This is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace that I have endured among my people. The Gospel of our Lord. And again, Mary was perplexed and Zechariah was terrified, filled with fear. Exactly how old was he? I don't remember. Yeah. He would have He would have been like ancient, you know, like fifty or sixty, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe forty five. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And so <coughs> and that I think that's another thing, you know, I think that's, you know, one thing that's getting a little bit better with society is the expectation to have children is, you know, for some people it, it's very strong, but for others it's, you can still have a fruitful life without that. And realizing that the expectation at this time is you would have children and the frustration it would have been for Elizabeth and Zachariah to have that a lot of importance on an heir too yeah all that and that was their retirement plan kids would take care of you and then yeah. then you get the similarities you have the angel coming down and talking to both of them he didn't talk to Elizabeth though no, that you did not do. That's that, a difference. Yeah. That and you have the placement. I mean, here you are in the sanctuary of the Lord mm -hmm. versus somewhere in some small town in yeah, rural. Somebody's somebody's home or Yeah. Yeah. Amazing that great things can happen in small towns. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the angel Gabriel begins with a common word of greeting translated greetings or hail, but the remainder of Gabriel's message is anything but ordinary. Mary's address is favored one, and Mary seems perplexed by what the greeting means. The angel assures her, don't be afraid, and again says to her, you have found favor with God. So the first next question is, what is the significance for Mary of having found favor with God? Like 
think we already know that she's a, a servant, but she's just an ordinary person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I have to assume she was also living a a life according to scripture faithful. and faithful, and mm -hmm. I don't know. I almost find it similar to um, um, when you um, realize that your teacher is paying attention to you, or you know that you can be recognized for who, what you are doing by a teacher that you didn't think was watching out for you, or a mm -hmm. principal, or you know somebody. Mm -hmm. That would say you you are favored, you are special. Mm -hmm. So what reassurances does this give us when we contemplate what God is calling us to do as disciples? What we do, you know, is being seen. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily always recognized right away. Yeah. I think it's also realizing too that we're not unimportant. You know, we may, you know, I, you know, I remember growing up small town, what is there to do? And now I'm older, I realize there's a lot of benefits here. Okay, well, Gabriel then gets to the heart of the message. Mary will conceive and give birth to a child, no ordinary child to be sure, but the Son of the Most High, this child is clearly identified as the promised Messiah, the fulfillment of, prof, of the prophet Isaiah's prophecy in Isaiah 9. Mary's initial response is of puzzlement. How can this be? She is but a young girl who has not yet had sexual relations. The answer through the power of the Holy Spirit, which will come upon and overshadow her. The word overshadow is the same word used in the Old Testament to describe God's presence resting on the tabernacle in the pillar of cloud in the Sinai Desert in Exodus. And just as the Spirit moved over the waters of creation, bringing forth life out of nothing, so God's Spirit will move again to bring about something new. Mary's response is one of obedient trust. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Her question, how can this be? is turned into an affirmation of trust. Let it be so. In a few short phrases, the plan of God is revealed. And just as God is able to bring about the birth of John and Elizabeth, who is beyond childbearing years, God is able to accomplish the virgin birth of Jesus through Mary. For nothing will be impossible with God. So now we come to the word among us. Who, me? You've got to be kidding. Why? We've never done it like that before. I don't think I can do that. Are you sure you want me? Any of these sound familiar? We often speak similar words when presented with an opportunity to stretch, to go beyond our comfort zones, to dare to venture out into uncharted territory. Change and challenge are difficult. They bring anxiety and confusion. They can turn our world upside down. We can identify with Mary's initial response to the angel's announcement that she was to give birth to the Christ. Our text tells us she was much perplexed and needed time to ponder just what, what all the commotion was about. Her first words were a question, how can this be? So recall a time when you were challenged and stretched to do something new. How did you respond? Well, I'd write a book about all the things and once you do it and once you, you know, um, Oh, sure, I can do that, you know, but at first when you initially have a chance to do something kind of cool, one I, I relate many different times is when I took a liturgical dance class at the at, uh, youth gathering, and they said, um, well, you know, we're performing on Saturday night. If any of you want to want to practice and do that, um, I was one of the first one to raise my hand and and uh, and it was very enjoyable, but it was not something I necessarily thought that I was. I I didn't really want to go to the youth gathering. I thought this is Atlanta. This is a city that I've never been in, and I hear so many bad things about all the corruption and oh yeah. And it was amazing and an experience that 
we've continued to try to keep our youth, you know, a chance to stretch their horizons. Yeah. Challenge them. Yeah, no, I still remember my first drill as in National Guards, mm. being so nervous and wondering what to do, where to be, learning new things. Yeah, when you get, you know, train and get skills, you can go beyond what you think you can do. Yeah. Thank you. Well, the angel Gabriel reminded Mary of the power of God's Holy Spirit. The same power that through God's word brought life out of nothing in creation. The same power that brought bundling life to an elderly Elizabeth. With this spirit, the impossible is possible. And Mary's words quickly changed from a question, how can this be, to an affirmation of willing trust. Let it be with me according to your word. Take a moment to silent and meditate on Mary's prayer. What thoughts come to mind? Let it be according to your word. Sometimes you just need that silence, meditation, taking it in. Yeah. Well, that, and it's, the I don't know, it's like being able to take that leap of faith when you're starting something new or different. You said, you know, going to Atlanta, you know, moving to a new place, starting a new school. There's a lot of changes Which that I happen never in life. Here. <laughs> But I think of my my relatives who did first come here. It was yeah. a leap of faith, the faith to go across the ocean and go to Chicago and get work and then come out. And yeah, you don't realize how much of a leap of faith it is until you read the little house or little the house uh, banks of Plum Creek, uh -huh. you know, and see how horrible those years were, uh -huh. and that yeah. our relatives stayed. Yeah. They did. You were north of town, we were south of yeah. town. <laughs> but you're right. I was with the Swedish part of <coughs> Okay. Well, as faithful disciples of Christ, we too have been called to do new things and exciting things. God has blessed us with unique gifts and talents. And God has placed us in opportunities to use and share these gifts. We may wonder at times whether we have the right stuff to do what we are called to do. The task often seems impossible. We know ourselves only too well, our weaknesses, our failings, our lack of experience. Even as we speak our doubts and our reservations, we hear the story of two women, Elizabeth, too old to conceive, and Mary, too young. If God's Spirit was able to move in each of them to do the impossible, who knows what impossible ventures God is birthing within you? The angel's assurance to Mary is also a word sorry, and the angel's assurance to Mary is also a word of comfort to each of us. Don't be afraid. For you have found favor with God. The Holy Spirit will be with you. May our responses to Mary's, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. So the first question here is, How does, how does an attitude of trust develop? Well, I, th I think that goes back to, We said Mary's relationship. Mm -hmm. She already had that. And it just built it more when Gabriel came and found favor and gave her a task that yeah, was so both. important to all of us. I think it's our own experience and also the experience of those that we know. You know, that's when you have, yeah, not quite the same, but I know when they talk about getting somebody to go watch a movie or go read a book, you know, better than any commercial is having a friend or somebody you trust tell you, hey, this was a good movie or this was a good book or we, this is a good church. We found no matter how much publicity money spent out, word of mouth is the best. Yeah. And that goes for um, any business too. Yeah. If you have somebody um, down, putting you down or saying bad things about, about your establishment, that is that more... Uh, hurtful than all the good publicity you yeah. can do because it just um, yeah 
But I think it's, you know, we get that attitude from our own experience, you know, like I said, from our own experience and those of those around us. I mean, that's how we learned is by watching our parents and grandparents. And so what are some barriers that block us from trusting God? Well, I think, you know, stuff that we don't understand. Yeah. Uh, doesn't make sense uh, to us. Yeah. We're, our brain is geared wrong. We haven't done it. You know, when you yeah, haven't done it no before, experience. it's hard to imagine mm -hmm. some things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Imagination, you know, I think some of it's fear. You know, I know the, so remember the fear of getting up and preaching is just, when I started out, it's like, uh. Mm -hmm. Or I still remember my fear as they told us that we had to memorize the words of institution in mm. seminary. I thought, oh man, I'm never going to do this. Now it's, you know, when you say it several times a month, it's, it's there. You can mm -hmm. see how you did it. But I think the other thing, you know, I think too, and when I first started off, even before becoming a pastor, the idea of giving, you know, they told me to start off with $5 a week. And it's like, man, when you're, when you're making next to nothing, it's like, that's significant. Mm -hmm. Will I be able to survive? And then you realize... I didn't even notice I didn't have it. And you start learning, you know, but that fear of what can I get by if I do this? Or if, can I survive being trapped with a bunch of teenagers for a week? Yeah, still then, debate. Then you, then you come to find out that those are some of the most cherished yeah. memories they have of you. I'm still debating which is worse. As a pastor being trapped with teenagers, or teenagers being pa trapped with a pastor. <laughs> but no, it's a good experience. And then the next question is, how might we incorporate Mary's prayer into our daily life? I guess the verse, for nothing is impossible with God sticks with me as much as anything because it it just it just shows if we put our trust in him he'll get us through even the darkest moments and help us accept even the hard things that diagnosis of cancer um for myself it was i didn't have a very good i had a doctor walk in it's 13 years ago and give me news that I probably wouldn't be here, you know, and, and, uh, with treatment and with medicine and with everything, <laughs> I'm still, uh, trying to be, uh, an important part in our church family and in my own yeah. family. I think that's part of the reason, you know, like, don't give up. Well, that takes me to uh, the Psalm 23, you know. The reminder that even when we go through the valley of the shadow of death or the darkest valley, you know, God is with us. That's... And to have that, you know, to have that trust. Which can be hard at times. Yeah. Well, when you have a doctor come yeah. in and give you that long face, it's... Uh, it's oh, wow. Yeah scary. I still remember we chose our doctor in North and South Dakota because he didn't have any tact and just blurted it out to us. <laughs> you might as well be honest. Don't uh, sugarcoat it. Yeah. I don't have any, I mean, having been in the nursing field for as long as I have, I, I don't, I don't have a lot of time for doctors that give people false hope. Yeah. Tell me what it is and we'll deal with it. Yeah. And do you take the steps? I think that's the other part too is the prayer, here I am, the servant to the Lord, let it be with me according to your word is, you know, we can almost look at it as with the pregnancy is when we take that leap, it's not always a leap. It's just one step followed by another step and by another step. 
Till after a while, you realized you've walked 10 miles in New Orleans. And or the snowball. Yep, it snowballs. One little bit, and it adds to another, and adds to another. And it's not always just jumping off. It's just some, taking that simple, you know, whether it's teaching Sunday school or reading in church. Or if you want to be courageous, sing loudly in church. Um, <laughs> Lord, that was so great. You know, I'm just waiting for another couple of years and we can have both a piano and a trumpet accompaniment during our hymns. Henry. We had that at the Christmas program at St. Olaf. They like to do a, re not quite a recital, but a solo piece before they started. So, they have a choice. So we had both piano and trumpet this year. We've had drums before, too. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Not like a good drum solo drummer boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Though I was watching a video about the little drummer boy, and I'm sitting there going, of all the things I know I don't want for a newborn, somebody playing drums when I'm trying to get him to sleep, that's pretty high on my list of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but baby mm -hmm. Jesus, no crying he made. Yeah. Well, he better have cried a little bit yep. to get his lungs cleared out. I was going to say, that's the argument we have at seminary is, as much as we like that song, if Jesus was fully mortal, whenever he was hungry, mm -hmm. he would have cried. Or wet. Or... Yeah. He probably would have been a really good baby, but they still yeah. take a while to yeah. learn. They, they, yeah, that's the humanness. Yeah. Okay, well, let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, and be our guest. Grant us bold and trusting faith that we might be instruments and bearers of your love. Amen. Amen. To dig deeper, you can read into the Isaiah 9, verses 2 through 7, which is the prophecy of the child to be born. Um, last word is, each day this week, pray Mary's prayer. Let it be with me according to your word. And Sunday, let me see if I memorized it right. We are at 8.30 at St. Olaf for a joint all-parish worship service on Sunday morning. At 1.30, we are at Country View for a Christmas Eve service at 3 o'clock. Or no, sorry. 1.30, we are at Good Samaritan in Westbrook. 3 o'clock, we're at Country View. 4.30, we're at Trinity. 5 o'clock, we're at Our Saviors in Dobry. 5.30, we're at English here in Walnut Grove. And at 8.30, we are at St. Olaf. And both St. Olaf, St. Olaf will be on this Facebook page and Trinity will be on their YouTube page. And so you can watch either way. But happy Advent and hope everybody will have a Merry Christmas season. God be with you.